G'day trendsetters, today I'm coming to you from the headquarters of Spur Cycle here in Bend, Oregon. Let's walk inside. They are expecting me. Here is Spur Cycle HQ. There's the man I'm gonna to speak to in a minute, that's Nick. Let's get Nick on camera so you can avoid listening to me bang on all day. All right, so I'll give you a quick tour of the space. We're really only talking about maybe 1,500 square feet here, but this is where we do everything. So we have parts coming in from various places around the country, well, really, in fact, around the world. Uh, a few pre-assembled products coming in, like our compact bell and our water bottles coming up from Morgan Hill from Specialized. Um, but we do all of the bell assembly here. We do some tool assembly here uh, in this tiny little workstation. Um, we do some key clip assembly, and then we do all of our fulfillment here. So um, I'll sort of walk you over this direction. In any given day, we have two to four people doing assembly. Um, Jack here is putting some feet on the mounts of our bell, but the process works from the beginning, doing some folding of some boxes and putting some small metal parts into those, the bands we call them, that affix a bell to the bicycle handlebar. From there, we start by installing our, these are these aluminum hammers here that gets installed to a wire lever. Simple with the right tools. Yeah, it's super simple once you have the fixtures. And that wire lever gets flexed using that fixture and then slid into the pivot of the mount. Then a rubber foot gets wrapped around that mount. We're generally working in small batches of 30 bells at a time. So Jack will be running through doing the rubber feet on all of those. And then we start the sort of final assembly process where we take the dome of the bell, put the bolt through, thread that into the nut, and then start the final packaging process. So. One of the preparatory steps and the really sort of the only more fabrication type things that we do in-house because our dome, for example, is formed on a very large 75 ton multi-stage progressive die press. Uh, that's coming to us from Arizona. But when we get these domes, they show up thousands at a time on a pallet. We have some custom packaging that keeps the domes uh, able to be transported over any given distance and keeps them. This is a nickel brass material, which is quite a soft material compared to something like stainless steel. So by sitting in this grid, they stay well protected. Then we have a, this is now our fourth iteration of how we do brushing, apply that brush finish to our domes. So early on, we did it by hand with a little Scotch-Brite pad and just a lathe. Then we created these machines that would do a single dome at a time, but it was a more automated process. To my right here is the third version of the machine, which uses a wheel and a, a CNC that comes over and picks up the dome, runs it over a 3M abrasive wheel, and then drops it off on the other side. That was something that used um, compressed air to hold the dome on the spindle in order to do the brushing. This fourth machine actually uses a pneumatic chuck. So this is our latest and greatest mechanism um, that runs about 120 domes over the course of just less than two hours. So we just run that all day long. Um, it works in an enclosed space just to keep the dust down, but it's a pretty light operation that goes and applies our brush finish. So you have a, a off tool finish that looks like that, rather dull, and then a brushed finish that, that looks like that. Beyond that, in this space, we also do uh, a pneumatic riveting operation. So we have a stainless steel stamped formed part. We have a small turned spacer that goes in between the two legs of that. And then we have a turned rivet pin. All three of those pieces go together. They fit in this mechanism here that sort of ensures that everything um, is held in the proper orientation because we have to set this. This is where the lever actuates through. It sort of sits in its normal position and rocks back before impacting the dome. So we have that fixture it into place, operate this. The pneumatic rivet comes down. It's an orbital riveting device. That's why we're able to have it on this sort of tabletop. It doesn't require as much force as just a standard linear rivet would require. 
and we do those sort of again in kind of a batch process to make um, the mount sub-assembly that once, once riveted looks like this. It just sort of rolls back that, that rivet pin upon itself to get a, a three-piece sub-assembly. That's it. That's the whole scoop. All right, folks, that wraps up today's video at Spur Cycle Headquarters here in Bend, Oregon. As always, thank you for watching. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the Gravel Cycles YouTube channel for interesting content such as this. No bull gravel bike reviews, other product reviews, ride experience videos, and general madness as all of it is released to the channel. I'll see you, I'll see these blokes in the next video.